Might be a little cramped. Yeah. Yeah. Ma'am? I think we should just start. Okay. Are y'all okay with there with us starting now? Yeah. Yeah? Are we excited? Yeah. So somewhat. So a little excited. We're good? Okay. We have four minutes to official kickoff, but we're, we're coming in hot. All right. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, this time that you give us to spend together. And uh, starting our Christmas um, festivities, and uh, Lord, we look to you. Um, we look to you in anticipation um, to your son, and um, we love you. You look great. The celebration of Christmas for Christians is such an important part of the church calendar that it's easy to assume that it's always been. But the major Christian festival for the early church was Easter. Around the 4th century, Christmas became part of the Christian calendar, and by the year 336, December 25th, was generally established as the date of Jesus' birth. Soon afterwards, church leaders began to fill the need for a period of preparation leading up to the actual celebration of the Christ child's birth. Thus, we have the Advent season. The observance of the hanging of the greens is an old English custom of decorating one's home with evergreens and other festive trappings for Advent and Christmas. For all of us here at Holly Grove, um, for all of us here at Faith Community, we continue a very special tradition called the hanging of the greens, the decorating of God's house with evergreens. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we are here in this house of worship to celebrate the advent of your Son, our Lord. This is a joyous occasion of God because our lives have been enlightened by the coming of Jesus. And so, with the lighting of candles and the singing of carols, we praise you, O Lord. With the placing of wreaths, the decorating of trees, and the ringing of bells, we honor your unspeakable love for us. Open our hearts so that we may joyfully welcome your Son. Open our eyes that we may see the beauty of his coming. Open our ears that we may hear anew the angel's song. And open our lips that we may tell others of his glory and his peace. Amen. 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 Christian Christmas tradition of Advent, Advent read. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12. In our first tradition, we recognize the Advent wreath, which symbolizes several things. The evergreen, which represents everlasting life found in Christ. The circle of the wreath, which symbolizes life without end. And the candles, which remind us of Christ as the light of the world. Within the wreath, we place three purple candles, one rose-colored candle, and one large white candle. The purple candles representing royalty, hope, humility, peace, and penitence, joy. And the rose-colored candle, <coughs> representing joy and happiness, love, will be in the coming Sundays of Advent. The tall white candle placed in the center is lit on Christmas Day to symbolize God's special light that has indeed come into this dark world. There are numerous journeys. A journey of the mind to imaginary places, a journey by car, train, airplane, or even bicycle to visit relatives or friends. Journeys which, journeys each with varying degrees of significance and meaning. Thousands of years ago, a journey was begun in heaven, destination, earth. This journey has affected the lives of millions of people around the world. Each of us will take many journeys, but the most significant journey we will make is toward the one whose journey brought eternal life to humanity.
parts of the world as a symbol of Christmas, it can be traced back to an old Mexican legend. A poor peasant girl going to her church to visit the manger saint on Christmas morning was brokenhearted because she had nothing of beauty or value to offer the Christ child. On her way, she picked some weeds from the side of the road, and as her only possession in the world, laid them at the feet of the statue of the Virgin Mary. Miraculously, they were transformed into the scarlet brilliance of the poinsettia we know today. The poinsettias remind us of Joel Robert Poinsett, for whom the plant is named. He was born in Charleston in 1759 and was a planter, botanist, statesman, and our country's first minister to Mexico, from whence he first brought the plant to Charleston in 1829. Now it is used throughout the world at Christmas time. The bright blood red poinsettia has become the most popular of all Christmas flowers. The star of belief is said to, to represent the star that stood over the Christ child. The red flower stands for the blood of the male infants that King Herod had slain. The red flower also represents the shed blood of Christ who came to be our Savior.
Then they opened their treasures and presented them with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. From the earliest times of the account of the journey of the wise men, has been a tremendous part of the Christmas season. It was through their love and desire to know the King of Kings that they traveled many miles, even risking their lives in the encounters with King Herod, so that they might present their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In our Christmas season today, we continue that gift-giving tradition, and in our Christian lives, each week we practice the same spirit of the Magi in giving tithes and gifts to Jesus, our King of Kings, so his ministry may continue in its way. Christmas. 
or the history of Christmas. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own, own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting, expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for, him, for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their, shop, over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appears with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on the earth. Peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what, it ha what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.